Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we saw that the homogeneous system plays an important role one in deciding the uniqueness of the solution of the non homogeneous system and finding all solutions of non homogeneous system knowing one particular solution of the non homogeneous system. We said that the main tool for this or the elementary row operations, the so called elementary row operations which we said we will denote by ERO for short. There were three types of ERO's which we introduced. So, we shall discuss this one by one. The first type E or O of type 1. This is called row exchange. What does this do? Keeps all but two rows unaltered then interchanges the position of these two rows. For example, if we interchange I throw and J throw positions we shall denote this by R I J R stands for row and I and J are exchanging positions. For example, if we take the matrix A 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, then when we put the arrow and write R 1, 2, what we mean is we are applying an elementary row operation on the matrix A. The operation is row exchange and the, this is 1 and 2 say the first and the second row are going to be interchanged and this results in 3 2 1 0 1 2 the resulting matrix will denote by A 1. So, in general if we have a matrix A belonging to F m cross n and we apply the I throw J throw interchange on that and what results is the matrix A 1. This is what is known as the elementary row operation of type 1. Some simple properties we will observe. Some simple properties of E R O of type 1. Clearly, in this example, if we again interchange the first and the second row, we will get back to the original matrix. 
In other words, the interchange is a reversible process or an invertible process. So, the first property we observe is that the ERO of type 1 is invertible. And if we have the transformation or the row operation as Raj, its inverse is again Raj. If you want to annul the exchange of the ith and the j row, you have to again exchange the ith and the j row so that they get back into the original position. So, the ERO of type 1 is invertible and the inverse is also an ERO of type 1. So, the inverse of an ERO of type 1 is an ERO of type 1. So, if we have A going to A 1 under the ERO of type 1 of exchange of the ith and the j row and then a 1 will go to a again by an interchange of the ith and the j row. So, this is the first observation we make. Now, the second one we will first look at the example we had. We had 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 was our matrix and we applied R 1 2 to it and what we get was 3 2 1 and 0 1 2. This we called as A 1. Now, let us look at the homogeneous system, look at the homogeneous system corresponding to A the original matrix and A 1 the matrix that has been obtained from A by applying an ERO of type 1. So, A x equal to now M this is 2 by 3 matrix. So, M is 2. So, A x equal to theta 2 corresponds to x 2 plus 2 x 3 is equal to 0. 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus x 3 equal to 0. The homogeneous system corresponding to A 1 is 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus x 3 equal to 0, x 2 plus 2 x 3 equal to 0. We observe that both are the same systems, they are the same equations appear in these systems, only the order in which we write these equations are different. So, both systems are same, only the order of the equations is changed. what does this imply? This implies that whenever something is a solution for the system A x equal to theta 2, it will also be a solution for the system A 1 equal to theta 2 and vice versa. So, the conclusion we, we can draw is that the homogeneous systems A x equal to theta m theta 2 and a 1 x equal to theta 2 have the same set of solutions, the same set of solutions. Now, it is easily seen that the same thing happens in the general situation of an m by n matrix, because all equations except 2 are put in the same position and 2 equations are interchanged in their positions and therefore, both of them will have the same set of equations. So, in general if A is an m by n matrix and we get A 1 from A by an elementary row operation of 
type 1, then the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m and A 1 x equal to theta m have the same set of solutions, the same set of solutions. And therefore, we can solve the system A x equal to theta m or the system A 1 x equal to theta m. This is the second simple property of the elementary row operation of type 1. What it says is by applying the elementary row operation on the matrix A, you are not destroying the set of solutions, you are not removing any solution, you are not creating any new solution, the same set of solutions remain for the resultant matrix also. The third observation we will make is, let us get back to our example, we had A equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 which is a 2 by 3 matrix and when we applied R 1 2, we got 3 2 1 and 0 1 2, we call this matrix A 1. Now, let us look at the value of m in this case, it is 2. So, we look at the 2 by 2 identity matrix, which is this and we apply the same elementary row operation which we applied to A to this matrix and we get this matrix 0 1 1 0 which we will call as P. Now, look at E times A that is pre multiply the matrix A by E which is 0 1 1 0 times 0 1 2 3 2 1. When we carry out the multiplication we get this which is precisely A 1. In other words the effect of operating with E R O type 1 on A is the same as pre multiplying the matrix A by E where E is obtained by effecting the same transformation on the 2 by 2 matrix. So, pre multiplication by E, pre multiplication of A by E produced the same effect as the E R row. Now, this is a, now we can see that this is in general true. So, the conclusion is if we have an m by n matrix analogously in the general situation and if A 1 is obtained from A by R A J then look at I m the m by m identity matrix apply R i j the same elementary row operation that we did on A to the identity matrix I m to get a matrix E then E a will be equal to so, pre multiplication of this type of matrix effects the same change as applying the elementary row operation. So, this is the first type of elementary row operation that we consider. The second type of elementary row operation here what we do is keep all rows except one row unchanged. We keep all rows except one row unchanged 
then let us say all rows except j row are kept unchanged. Then we are going to effect a change only in the i row. To the i row, I am sorry, to the j row, add all four times the i row. We write this as R j to the jth row we are going to add alpha times the ith row. So, we take a matrix A and we apply this transformation the jth row is replaced by the jth row plus alpha times the ith row to get a new matrix. This is the elementary row operation of type 2 and the notation we <coughs> use is R j plus alpha R i. Let us look, look at an example. Let us say A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. This is our matrix. Now, it is a square matrix is irrelevant any square or rectangular matrix you can perform this. So, now let us look at the transformation when we write R 3 plus 2 R 1. What we mean here is it is the third row alone that is undergoing a change because R 3 plus. So, R 3 is going to change R 1 and R 2 are going to be the same. So, R 1 and R 2 are unaltered and R 3 is going to change and how is it going to change to the third row we are going to add twice the first row. So, we get 3 plus 2 5, 1 plus 2 3 and 2 plus 0 2 and this matrix we call as A 1. So, here is a example of elementary row operation of type 2 in general we denote it by R j plus alpha times R i if the j row undergoes the change by adding alpha times the i row to that. Alpha can be any number in f it can be positive or if, if f is real alpha can be positive or negative or 0. If f is complex it can be positive negative real or it could be pure imaginary or it could be any complex number. Now, let us look at simple properties of ERO of type 2. Once again we observe that if we change the jth row by adding alpha times the i row to annul this change to get back to the original position we have to remove whatever we had added. So, we have to subtract alpha times the i row. So, we have that the first property that E r o of type 2 is invertible. That is, if we have R j plus alpha R i to reverse that process from the j row, whatever was added must be removed now. So, it should be minus alpha times R i. For example, in the above example, we had 1, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 1, 2 and this was the matrix A and we had R 3 plus 2 R 1 and we got 1 1 0 
2015 Now to annul this if we do R3 minus 2 R1 we will get back to A. This is what we mean by saying that the ERO of type 2 is invertible. Notice that the inverse Rj plus minus alpha times R or I is also an elementary operation of the type 2 because again we are adding a multiple of some row to another row. So, the inverse of an ERO of type 2 is again an ERO of type 2. That is the first fundamental property of ERO's of type 2. Let us look at previously when we discussed with ERO of type 1, we were found that it was invertible and inverse of ERO of type 1. Again we have found that when you deal with ERO of type 2, it is invertible and the inverse is again ERO of type 2. And when we discussed ERO of type 1, we said that it does not alter the solutions of the homogeneous system. That is we would like to know whether the same thing is true here also. Let us again look at our example. We had 1, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 1, 2. This was the matrix A and we did R3 plus 2 R1 to get 5, 3, 2 which is A1. Now, look at the homogeneous systems corresponding to A and A1. So, we have Ax equal to theta 3, now m is 3 in this case. The equations are x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0, 2 x 1 plus x 3 equal to 0, 3 x 1 plus x 2 plus 2 x 3 equal to 0. The system corresponding to A 1 is x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0, 2 x 1 plus x 3 equal to 0, 5 x 1 plus 3 x 2 plus 2 x 3 equal to 0. Now, we see that if any x 1, x 2, x 3 satisfies this set of equations, it will certainly satisfy the first equation in the a 1 x because they are same. It will certainly satisfy the second equation in a 1 x because they are the same. It will also satisfy the third equation because the third equation is nothing but the third equation of the first set plus twice the first equation of the first set and since the first equation is satisfied they will also be satisfied similarly in the reverse manner. So, what we observe is that the two homogeneous systems A x equal to theta 3 and A 1 x equal to theta 3 have the same set of solutions. Therefore, whether we solve Ax equal to theta 3 or A 1 x equal to theta n. So, in general analogously for any m by n matrix we see that this is true. So, in general if A is an m by n matrix and A goes to A 1 under the transformation R j plus alpha R i then the homogeneous systems A x equal to theta m and A 1 x equal to theta m have the same set of solutions. Therefore, whether we solve the system A x equal to theta m or whether we sort the system a 1 equal to theta m both are equivalent because we are going to get the same set of solutions. 
the third again when we look at ERO of type 1 we found that the ERO of type 1 can be implemented or effected by pre multiplying the matrix by a new matrix obtained by applying the same transformation to the identity matrix. Let us look whether that is true in this case. Again let us look at the example we had. We had A equal to 1 1 0 2 0 1 3 1 2. We did the operation R 1 R 3 plus 2 R 1 to get a new matrix 1 1 0 2 0 1 5 3 2 which we called as A 1. Now, we have a 3 by 3 matrix M is 3 in this case. So, we consider the 3 by 3 identity matrix and now on this we apply the same transformation we applied as above R 3 plus 2 R 1. What do we get? I is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1. So, when I apply this transformation I get 1 0 0 0 1 0. The first two rows are not affected. The third row is going to change by adding twice the first row to it. So, we get this. This is what I call as E. So, when I apply on I this transformation now easy to verify when we pre multiply E and A what we get is precisely A 1. So, thus we see that the E R O of type 2 can be effected by a pre multiplication E A where if the E R O of type 2 is R j plus alpha R i E is obtained from I m by applying R j plus alpha R. Thus in all the three cases if we summarize we see the following. We had three types of ERVOs type 1, which we simply denoted by Rij, interchange of i throw and j throw, type 2, Rj plus alpha R. Now, what is the third type? What are the two? these two fellows possess in common. The common thing is they are invertible inverse is again same type ERO the effect can be achieved by pre multiplying we will simply write by an E we understand what we mean by an E the E means on the identity matrix apply the same type of ERO. The third type we will introduce is again going to possess the same properties. It will also be invertible. They do not change the solutions of homogeneous system. The third type also is going to possess the same properties. It is again a simple your row again all but one row remain unaltered all but one row remain 
unaltered, only one row undergoes a change, say the uh, except the ith row, all remain unaltered except the ith row. What do we do on the ith row? It is the ith row that is going to undergo a change. What the type of change that we will make is we are going to multiply every entry in the ith row by a number alpha in f where alpha is not 0. So, we are going to multiply every entry in the ith row by a non-zero number. This is a very important operation later we will see it brings in some normalizations in the reductions that we do. For example, let us take the matrix 1 0 minus 1 2 1 2. Let us say we are going to change the second row. What is the change we are going to make? We are going to multiply every entry by minus 3. So, what do we get? 1 0 minus 1 minus 6 minus 3 minus 6. We call this matrix as A 1. So, again we look at some. So, in general okay, let us uh, fix the notation in general alpha r i would mean we are multiplying i throw by alpha where of course, alpha will be non or 0. So, again we observe some simple properties of the elementary row operation of type 3. Now, look at the above example, look at the systems homogeneous systems A x equal to theta in this case m is 2, n is 3. So, we have to take theta m which is theta 2 and A 1 x equal to theta 2. What are these two systems? The equations here are x 1 minus x 3 equal to 0, 2 x 1 plus x 2 plus 2 x 3 equal to 0. The equations here are x 1 minus x 3 equal to 0 minus 6 x 1 minus 3 x 2 minus 6 x 3 equal to 0. Now, look at these two system. The first equations are the same and therefore, whichever satisfy the first equation on this side will also satisfy the first equation on that side. And if any one x 1, x 2, x 3 satisfy the second equation on this side, it will also satisfy the second equation on that side because it is just both sides multiplied by minus 3. Similarly, if anybody satisfies the second equation on the right side, it will also satisfy the second equation on the first side because it is only division by minus 3. That is why we wanted to assume alpha not equal to 0 because we want to divide by alpha. So, both have same set of solutions. Thus, so in general If I have a matrix which is m by n and I get go from a to a 1 by multiplying the i throw by alpha i alpha not equal to 0, then the homogeneous systems a x equal to theta m and a 1 x equal to theta m both have the same set of 
solution. The second property that we observe about the ARO of type 3 is that just like the other two ERO's this is also invertible. ERO of type 3 is invertible because if you obtain A1 from A by multiplying all the entries in a particular row by a non-zero constant we can annul this effect by multiplying by the inverse of that non-zero constant the same row. So, therefore, we have if alpha r i is the row operation type 3 then its inverse will be multiply the i row by alpha inverse. And now this alpha inverse makes sense because we have assumed alpha not equal to 0. That is why it is important to state in the elementary row operation type 3 that it is multiplication of a row by a non-zero alpha in f. So, the ERO of type 3 is again an ERO of type 3 because it is again multiplying the ith row by some number. So, this is again an ERO of type so, therefore, if we have A and we get A1 by alpha Ri, then we will get back to A from this by alpha minus 1 or alpha to the power of minus 1 or the third important property. Let us look at our example A was 1 0 minus 1 2 1 2 and we applied minus 3 times r 2 to get minus 6 minus 3 minus 6 which we called as a 1. Again as before observe this is a 2 by 3 matrix therefore, m is 2 in this case. So, we consider the identity matrix 2 by 2 which is 1 0 0 1. Suppose we apply the same transformation on this, we get 1 0 0 minus 3 which we will call as E. If we now multiply E and A, what we are going to get is that 1 0 0 minus 3 into 1 0 minus 1 2 1 2 which is just 1 0 minus 1 minus 6 minus 3 minus 6 which is a 1. So, once again the ERO of type 3 can be implemented or effected by pre multiplying A by an E. We know what is meant by an E. Take the identity matrix and apply the same transformation to the identity matrix. So, thus in all the three cases of this elementary row operations the three fundamental properties that we observe are. So, all ERO's have the following properties 1 they are invertible inverse is of the same type 2 they do not alter the solutions of the homogeneous system and 3 they can be affected by pre multiplication by any 
free multiplication of A by an E. We again we uh, tacitly understand what we mean by E. So now what we will do is let us take F M N and let us denote by E to be the set of all elementary row operations on M by N matrices. All possible elementary row operations on M by N matrices. They may be of type 1, they may exchange a choose any arbitrarily 2 rows and exchange them or add a multiple of some row to another row or multiply some row by a non-zero constant. So, take all possible elementary row operations on M by N matrices and call them as E. This is the collection of all elementary operations on M by N matrices. Now, suppose I take I M the M by M identity matrix and take E in E that means E is an elementary row operation and I apply E to this I am going to get let us call it as E naught and then we get a matrix E that is by applying an elementary operation an identity matrix we get a matrix E such matrices are called elementary matrices. So, therefore, an M by M elementary matrix is a matrix obtained by applying an elementary row operation any one of the elementary row operations from this collection on I m. So, therefore, what we had observed was that E r rows are effected by pre multiplying A by an element by elementary matrices. That is the important observation to make. All A, any type of ERO can be effected by pre multiplying the given matrix by a suitable elementary matrix. Now, let us look at FMN. Take two matrices in FMN. So, I am looking at two matrices of the same size, and suppose there are elementary row operations, let us call them as E1, E2, some EK that is these are all in the collection of elementary row operations each one is an elementary row operation. Suppose they are such that when I apply on E successively the elementary row operations I get A 1 then I apply the elementary row operation I get A 2 and so on and so forth and finally, I apply the elementary row operation and I get P. Suppose I have two matrices A and B and a succession of elementary row operations such that when I apply this succession of elementary row operations on A, I get the matrix B, then we say A is row equivalent. and 
symbolically we write this as and symbolically we write a rho equivalent to b. Now, observe the following suppose a is rho equivalent to b what do we mean we can move step by step from a applying one elementary rho operation at each step to finally reach the goal b. Now, each step is an elementary rho operation and we have seen that each elementary rho operation is invertible and therefore, we can reverse each step and then we can go back from b to a purely by a sequence of elementary rho operations. So, we will now apply all these together and observe the following properties. one we can go from a to a by one step namely simply multiply the first row by one. So, we can go from a to b by one elementary row operation. So, a is rho equivalent to a itself a is rho equivalent to itself because we can go from a to a by a finite number of successive elementary operations we call this property the reflexivity property of rho equivalence. Secondly, as we have observed if I can go from A to B by elementary rho operations and since each elementary rho operation is reversible we can also go from B to A by elementary rho operations. So, since each E R O is invertible and again an E R O the inverse is again an E R O we see that A will be rho equivalent to B if and only if B is rho equivalent to A. If I can go from A to B by retracing the paths I can go from B to A and vice versa. So, A is rho equivalent to B if and only if B is rho equivalent to B. This is called the symmetry property of rho equivalence. The third property is suppose A is rho equivalent to B and B is rho equivalent to C what does that mean? That means, I can apply a number of steps to get to B and this is a finite number of elementary row operations and maybe I can apply so let us call it as K F 1, F 2, F s to go from B to C. The A to B there are a finite number of elementary row operations b to c there are a finite number of elementary operations that means, I can go from a to c by a finite number of e r o s why first apply all these e 1, e 2, e k s then apply f 1, f 2, f s you will go from a to b and then to c. So, you will go all the way from a to c. So, that means, since I can go from a to c by a finite number of e r o s it follows that A will be rho equivalent to C. So, the conclusion is if A is rho equivalent to B and B is rho equivalent to C then A is rho equivalent to C. This is called the transitivity property of the rho equivalence. If any relation has these three properties of reflexivity, symmetry and transitivity it is called an equivalence relation and hence rho equivalence is an equivalence relation on 
the collection of all m by n matrices. Now, suppose A is rho equivalent to B. Now, we get back to our basic problem of the homogeneous system of equations. Look at the system corresponding to A x and look at the system corresponding to B the matrix B, B x equal to theta m. Now, how do I go from A to B? I go from A to B step by step by elementary row operations and we have observed that the elementary row operations do not alter the set of solutions of the homogeneous system and therefore, at each step the system possesses the same solutions and therefore, at the end A and B the corresponding homogeneous system will possess the same solutions. Since E R rows do not alter the set of solutions of the homogeneous system, we see that the two systems have same set of solutions. Therefore, conclusion A is rho equivalent to B implies the systems, when we say systems we mean the homogeneous systems A x equal to theta m and B x equal to theta m have the same set of solutions. How do we exploit this? The idea is start from A, apply suitable ERO's step by step to A to get a rho equivalent matrix B, then we can solve B x equal to theta m instead of A x equal to theta m because both have same set of solution. The idea is choose E R both so that easy to solve B x equal to theta m. How do we do this? We shall see this in the next lecture.